So, uh, undefended testes uh, is a condition uh, where the testes doesn't come down into the scrotum. So, it could be just one side, one testis is not in the scrotum, or it could be the both side. And interestingly, it is very common. If you see normal, it is 1 to 2 percent of the normal babies. And it's a very common condition in the small babies. So I think it is very important. All the parents, GP, doctors, and especially the staff who check the baby at birth at, and six weeks check, they must be aware of this condition. Well, very interesting. I mean, exactly, we don't know the cause. Exactly, we don't know the cause. But there are many uh, factors which has been uh, made responsible. Sometimes it is familiar. We see in the family sometimes some gene is responsible. Or if the baby is born very prematurely, rather than 40 weeks, it, it born early. 30 week, 28 week, then it is much more commoner. It's also the effect of the hormones. You know, this whole phenomenon is due to some hormonal factor. And uh, I have to say, I mean, all the parents, especially the moms, should be aware that sometimes it has been seen to be associated with mom's habit of taking extra alcohol, uh, smoking, uh, excessive use of pesticides in the cleaning of the house or even C is diabetic. So these all are important conditions which parents and doctors should know. But sometimes we see in a specific pediatric surgical condition like abdominal wall defect and all where there's not enough pressure in the tummy to push testis down. We do see it. So there are many uh, risk factors, associated factors, but exactly we don't know. I mean, the symptoms are very straightforward, that when the baby is born, the usually the doctors or the midwife will check them and they can find a straight way that the testis is not there. Or if that has not been checked that time, uh, I recommend that at least at the six weeks check, they must see it and find it. If any doubt, they must refer it not only to the GP, directly to the pediatric surgeon. You know, we did a study um, on delay in diagnosis because there are so many risks of delay in diagnosis of undescended testes. And the commonest cause we found of this delay in diagnosis was that the midwives were diagnosing this testes, that it's not there, but rather than referring them directly to the pediatric surgeons, they were sending a letter to the GP and in that pathway it got to be lost. So it's a straightforward condition. Uh, they can feel in the scrotum. If they can't feel, it should be referred. But sometimes, even if it has been there at birth, they can see it. But testes can go up later on, which we call ascending testes. Very rarely, if it is not treated early, then they can present with the symptoms of complications like a higher risk of cancer, higher risk of hernia. Uh, later on, so in adults, we see some fertility problem. And also, sometimes the test is twist. So twist is a very catastrophic condition in the children. And that could be associated with the undescended test. So complications we rarely see, but it is important, especially in developing world, we see much more than that. So, but Clinically, it is straightforward. If you have seen before, you can diagnose it very clearly. Ah, so that's a good question. I think I would suggest as soon as possible, because uh, many times the you know the baby are very chubby, and uh, and uh, even if the testis is there, uh, sometimes midwives or uh, 
doctor cannot feel it. So I think if any doubt, it must be referred as soon as possible, especially if not found at the six weeks check, because many of these testes are actually not undescended. They are a retractile testes, which does up and down. And those testes doesn't need anything. So at least you can know what it is. Sometimes it is ectopic. It's not there. And they are more supposed to trauma and injury. So I would suggest it should be referred as soon as possible because we know there's huge waiting everywhere for um, these type of surgery uh, because the operation has to be done before one year of age. So if it is sent late, then it could be equally delayed and that has got bad effects on fertility and other issues. So I think it's a straightforward. I mean, uh, you can feel the testis, try to feel the testis in the scrotum. Uh, if you can feel it, it's fine. But again, it depends all experience. Many times we see that testis has not been felt by midwife or a GP or other doctors. And when they come to our clinic, we find the testis. So clinical experience is important, but that is the most common thing. But if we can't feel that, then we can do an ultrasound scan that will tell us if still we can't feel then we put it maybe for examination under anesthesia that's operative procedure in the same setting we put a keyhole a laparoscope a camera inside the tummy and we see where exactly is the testis because the testis forms in the tummy in the abdomen and then it comes down so if, if it is not outside there's a good chance it could be inside the abdomen. I mean, treatment is like if it is a retractile testis, like the testis is doing up and down, there's good size, no harm. Then, of course, we can wait and see this. Most of the testis, they do come down. If they are in groin area, I could feel it. Then it's a, a straightforward day case type of surgery. Children come in the morning, we operate, they go home same day, bringing down the testis. But the things becomes a bit more tricky when the testis is inside the abdomen. As I said, because the testis forms in tummy, so the blood supply still comes from the abdominal aorta, main vessels. So it all depends how long is the blood supply. If the blood vessels are long enough, we can bring this testis down in one keyhole surgery. If they are not long enough, then they need two, at least two surgery, uh, one that day and one after the six month. So we bring down by the keyhole surgery in two stages for the high testis. But most of the testis are in the groin and they can be brought down straight away. 